We have two new bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, and are you ready to return to Mars? Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. We are finally calming down from a couple solar storms we've been having over the past couple weeks, but the sun is not done. As we switch to our front side sun, we actually have two new bright regions. These are solar cycle 25 sunspots. And as a matter of fact, they're the largest sunspots we've seen yet of this new solar cycle. And luckily they are managing to boost the solar flux for emergency radio operators, but they are not flare active. So we're not having any impacts to radio comms for these Mars launches. Now, as we switch to our far-sighted view of the sun, this is stereo and it's looking at the sun pretty much from the side. You can see both region 2767 and region 2768. But if you look closely at the region in the north, oh my gosh, it's been firing in a couple solar storms and it got me kind of biting my nails thinking, uh-oh, are we gonna be having some flare activity and therefore maybe some comms problems when it comes to these Mars launches? But nope. Just as this thing begins to rotate into Earth view, it has quieted down. So it looks like everything is good for these launches and for communications for these spacecraft as they launch out to the red planet. And we are all in the green. And now for your Martian Minute. Excitement builds as we prepare for the Perseverance rover along with its helicopter drone Ingenuity to rocket its way to the red planet on board the Mars 2020 mission. But before it begins its final descent for a landing at Jezero Crater in search of life, we must always be reminded to check the weather. The loss of Opportunity rover during the massive dust storms in the summer of 2018 still stings, and we sure don't want to repeat such a tragedy. During that time, Opportunity, which was in the Meridiani Planum, had to endure the most intense dust storms ever observed on Mars. These dust storms were seen by multiple instruments, like the Thermal Emission Imaging System, also known as Themis, on Mars Odyssey. From the red extensive region shown in the Themis imagery, you can see the dust storms back in 2018 were massive, and they lasted for many months. And sadly, Opportunity Rover didn't make it. Since then, things have calmed down quite a bit, but we stay ever vigilant especially since this new rover we're sending has the best chance yet of finding evidence of life on Mars. Landing in a crater that was once a massive water-filled lake, complete with an eastern river delta that spills right into the region, this area is rife for life. But located on the edge of Syrtis Major, it's also rife with the potential for dust storms. Guaranteed, we'll be keeping a close eye on that weather in that region from now on. In fact, taking a look at the current weather on Mars, we've been seeing a bit of sustained activity just south of Arabia and east of the Meridionic Planum, which has settled down over the past week, luckily. But if we switch to more sensitive measurements made from Themis, we can see there has been a bit of dust in Sirtis Major near Jezero Crater. Luckily, though, as we continue into the fall season, things are slowly beginning to calm down. Meanwhile, in the tropics near Curiosity at the equator, it's enjoying a partially sunny day with a high temperature of zero Celsius, but at the higher latitudes of Elysian Planitia, InSight shows it's clear and sunny with a high of minus 16, a low of minus 92, and the winds are out of the north-northwest at 7 meters a second. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of the first quarter on our way to a full moon, with a full moon being on the third. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to have this bright companion to deal with, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we finally calmed down from several weeks of solar storming. And believe it or not, there's not much in the forecast this week. We're only expecting a little bit of slow solar wind and maybe a few disturbed conditions here and there. So at high latitudes, NOAA's only expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 20% chance of active conditions. And this should last throughout the week. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled to maybe even normal conditions with only about a 10% chance of active conditions. And that's kind of a nice reprieve because next week we are expecting some more fast wind. So enjoy this because it may not last much longer. 
Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, when was the last time I could actually say we had two sunspots on the Earth-facing disk? My goodness, it's been a while. So this is good news, especially considering neither of them are flare producing. So everything is in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We don't have any risk for radio blackouts, and that should make GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. But also, look at that solar flux. We're back into the market marginal range or for radio propagation we're back into the low 70s and we could actually climb into the mid 70s by the end of this week that's not only due to those two uh, sunspots that are on the earth facing disk but also due to several other bright regions that are going to be rotating into earth view here over the next couple days so amateur radio operators and emergency responders enjoy this wonderful radio propagation on earth's day side and it should easily last through the rest of this week and possibly beyond that before things begin to calm down. Now also because we still are at basically solar minimum, we're just beginning to come out of it, the cosmic ray flux is a bit more intense than we'd like it to be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is finally beginning to give us a reprieve. We're not expecting any solar storms to hit and we don't have any fast solar wind on the way. So you aurora photographers, hey, you've been working so hard with getting those gorgeous aurora shots with Neowise. So you know what? Pat yourself on the back and take a breather because you finally get it some time to rest. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, oh my gosh, things are looking so much better. What a difference a day makes, huh? We have two bright regions, two sunspots that have rotated into Earth view, and they have boosted the solar flux back up into the marginal range for radio propagation, and we could be even in the mid-70s for solar flux by mid-next week, and that could last easily over the next week even after that. So my goodness, this is a great time for dayside radio propagation, so enjoy. Now also you GPS users, well, you know what? We don't have anything in the way of solar storms and that's good news and you know the solar flux is beginning to rise a little bit but it's still pretty low so overall GPS at reception should be pretty nice for you guys even at low latitudes and even on Earth's night side. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.